Andy from HEL. I'm here today to tell you about our FlowCat reactor system. The FlowCat is a benchtop fixed bed reactor system. We designed the FlowCat to be a scaled down version of industrial fixed bed reactors that have been used in industrial processes for decades for ton scale production. As a result, the FlowCat is a fully scalable flow chemistry system. In fact, many of our early customers bought a FlowCat as a model of existing plant to further develop their processes and catalysts. Fixed bed reactors are ideal for flow chemistry. They do what they say on the tin. You have a fixed bed within the reactor or you have a fixed set of heterogeneous catalysts. The advantage of this is that whilst you are using a relatively small amount of catalyst in absolute terms, because you only have a small amount of reagent in the reactor at any given time, rather than as you'd have in batch of having one, five, maybe ten mole percent catalyst, you have several thousand mole percent catalysts. This drives very fast and very selective chemical reactions, provided of course you don't leach or poison the catalyst. But if you understand your chemistry properly, you should be able to get around that. So this is our fixed bed reactor from the FlowCat. This reactor is a six inch long stainless steel pipe with a frit at the bottom to retain the solid in the reactor. So we have this glass vial here where I've just put a little mark on it to show the volume that is in the reactor. Now I'm going to pack the reactor today with some glass beads. These are a good inert packing material if you're wanting to run a reaction with say a homogeneous catalyst who are co-flowing but also a lot of people will dilute their heterogeneous catalyst with glass beads because maybe you only need a hundred mix you don't need to pack a whole gram in there. So we're just going to fill glass beads into the vial up to the light. These pour very much like a liquid. Again if you're using a powdered catalyst you'd have put the powder in first and then you just swill round to mix it. Next we want to load it into the reactor. For this we use a funnel, in this case I've just trimmed down a plastic pipette because it fits nicely. But you can buy small funnels such as this one here. Just have our vial here, if we've mixed that round nicely, we then just literally pour it down the funnel into the reactor. Once that's gone in, we just give it a little tap to level it off, take the funnel out and that's our reactor packed. Now we've packed the reactor we can put it on the system and it will run. Now a packed bed reactor should run in a sort of plug flow mode where you've got even distribution of the liquid down the column. When you're running liquid gas mode, you, what you get is trickle bed mode. And here, if you imagine my fist is a catalyst particle, the liquid will flow over the surface and the gas will flow around the outside. As a result, you always have a thin film of liquid in contact with the gas. So you're not limited by the solubility of the gas in your reaction liquid which is the classic problem of flow of having to run at very high dilutions because gas isn't soluble. You can get far more gas in, you get far better mass transfer and therefore you can run at far larger scales. So let's turn to look at the system now. FlowCat is principally used for liquid and gas reactions such as hydrogenation, carbonylation or direct oxidation. It runs at relatively high temperatures and pressures. This system here is rated to 200 bar and 400 degrees C although our standard system is 100 bar and 300 degrees C. For most organic chemists, these temperatures may seem high. But what you've got to remember, in flow, you're into a hot zone and then out of it very quickly. So potentially you can drive chemistry at far higher temperatures than you'd ever be comfortable doing in batch. This system is designed to produce around a kilo a day of material based upon, say, a hydrogenation reaction. There's an excellent example of this, which is shown in the OPRD paper, captioned below, which was written by the University of Cambridge where they did a reduction of a nicotinamide and over the course of two weeks of experiments scaled from what was just a concept in a paper they had read up to two kilograms a day production. So now let me take you through the system. On the left hand side here we have the feeds, in the middle the reactor, on the, out, on the right hand side the outlet. Now on this system we have one liquid and one gas feed from one HPLC pump and regulated by one mass flow controller. Mass flow controller is linked to the software so any gas can be used, you just choose which one you're using from the drop down menu. All the gases come in through these bulkhead fittings here. So this one is for the reactive gas and this lower one here is for a purge gas which just comes in, we've got a ball valve here so you can easily purge with nitrogen at the beginning and end of your reaction. 
If you want to use more than one gas feed or more than one liquid feed, we supply more pumps or more mass flow controllers. Next, we come onto the reactor. The liquid and the gas are coming in from the top, and again, you've got the thermocouple in the middle. So we have our reactor here, which I've just packed with catalyst. That slides on here. The thermocouple, as you know, goes straight into the reactor bed. Once we've lined that up, we just screw that on. It's a screw fitting, so it's nice and easy to use for chemists. Now we have a hex nut on the bottom, but you don't actually need to tighten this with a spanner in order to get a gas tight seal. That's good to 200 bar as I've done that finger tight. At the base, we just have this push fit fitting. That just clicks on the bottom, so that's the complete assembly, all together and all ready to use. Around the outside is the heating mantle. We've got these inserts to adapt for different diameter tubes, which is easily changeable with a screw. That just clicks on around the outside and the clip holds it in place. Around the outside of that is a guard, which just prevents you putting your hand on it when it's hot. So once your liquid is flown from your sources through the reactor, then comes out and we have a sampling valve here. It allows you to directly sample the reaction mix as it leaves the reactor. You can either turn this valve to get a small aliquot of liquid out, which you can then take for TLC or whatever analytical technique you're using to monitor your reaction. In addition, you could replace this module by a PAT analysis uh, maybe something like a UV or an IR spectrometer, which we can link to our software to have all that data tied up together. A number of clients replace this with an automated valve, which is under the control of our software, and they'd link that through to a GC or a HPLC to give live monitoring of the reaction as you vary the conditions in the software. After the sampling valve, we have a, our back pressure regulation system. This valve will vent the liquid and gas together and it will open and close to control the set pressure defined in the software. Liquid and gas flow together out through this tube and into our cyclone separator. Here the liquid will drop out the bottom, and here we're collecting it just in a simple bottle, and the gas will come off at the top. If you have, if for example, you're doing a direct oxidation reaction where you're running O2 through the reactor, which is something you can do on our systems, you might want to purge nitrogen back through just to strip the oxygen out to avoid any flammability risk. If you've got a particularly toxic or flammable gas, then you might want to route this through into a scrubber or a venting system. However, most clients will just vent into a fume hood and a normal fume hood extraction rate will remove the gas at a sufficiently high rate that you won't get any sort of dangerous buildup. Now I'd like to talk about the safety features on the system. Now the system, because it's a flow system, is intrinsically safer than a batch system would be of the same scale of production. At any given time, you only have a few millilitres of liquid and gas in the system, which makes it intrinsically safe for it, safer, but it doesn't make it totally safe. We have a number of safety features on the system. We have these check valves, which prevent any back flushing into the feeds. We have electrical trips in the heater that prevent it overheating. We have a pressure relief valve here, which will vent if too much pressure builds up within the system. Here you can see the pipe is venting upwards. If you have particularly hazardous chemistry, you could route that through to either a dump tank, a scrubber, or a ventilation system. Sitting above all of this is our WinISO control software. The WinISO software incorporates modules which can trigger safety shutdowns based upon any variable on the system. So you can set a shutdown temperature, a shutdown pressure, a shutdown flow rate, even a shutdown difference between the jacket and the reactor bed temperature. So if you see the reactor bed suddenly go up in temperature when you're not heating, you know there's an exotherm and you want to kill the flows. The system is fully controlled by our WinISO software which allows you to write recipes and methods which, you, which the computer will run automatically and the system can be operated fully unattended. So this is our FlowCat system. It's a benchtop system that can be easily used to produce kilograms per day of material. It's flexible and it's simple to use for all chemists. And most of all, it's safe. For more information on this or any of our other products, please visit our website at www.hellgroup.com or email us at the address shown at the end of the video.